Death is something that we'll all have to face someday. Death has been described as the king of terrors in the book of Job and the terror of kings. In our generation, death is so slick, it's a case of out of sight and out of mind. It's handled by the professionals in hospitals and in hospices. And many people, the average person goes through their life, well up to adult certainly, without ever seeing anybody die. But the older you get, the more funerals you go to, including people your own age and even younger in some instances. In previous generations, barring mishaps or unless you were a soldier, most people died at home and families would gather around the bedside of those who were dying. And families had to wait sometimes days before the undertaker could get there to remove the dead. But we know that in the end, there is an end. I heard of an undertaker that used to sign his letters, yours, eventually. The comedian Woody Allen says, it's not that I'm afraid of dying, I just don't want to be there when it happens. Well, certainly he and all of us are going to be there when it happens. In the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, the epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 9, and verse 27, we read, It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And as well as the inevitable death, Jesus teaches that there's two destinations. There's heaven and there's hell. And the Bible describing the book of, describing the day of judgment in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 12, and Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 10, contains these words, and the books were opened. So the Bible says that after death, there's the judgment. The sceptic says, well, if somebody came back from the dead and told me what it was like, then I would believe in life after death. In the New Testament, it's interesting because Jesus makes that very claim. He says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18, he says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and have the keys of hell and of death. Is Jesus true or is he not? That's the thing you have to ask yourself. Jesus died, his disciples saw it, and that was prophesied in the Old Testament hundreds and thousands of years before it happened. You can get a Bible and look at the Old Testament, the prophecies, and read them and see for yourself that Jesus fulfilled them. Jesus died, the apostles saw it, he was buried, and he rose. People don't die for lies. All the disciples died proclaiming the resurrection of Christ. Andrew was crucified in Greece on an X-shaped cross. Bartholomew was beaten, then crucified. James, the son of Alphaeus, was beaten, then stoned and clubbed to death. James, the son of Zebedee, was killed by the sword of Herod. You can read that in Acts chapter 12 in the New Testament. John was tortured in boiling oil, and when he wouldn't die, he was banished to the Isle of Patmos, where he wasn't expected to be heard from again. And while he was there, Jesus spoke to him and gave him the book of Revelation. Judas, that's not Judas Iscariot, but the other Judas, also known as Lebeus Thaddeus, was crucified at Edessa, approximately 72 AD. Matthew was speared to death in Ethiopia. Peter was crucified in Rome under Nero, approximately AD 64. Philip was crucified in Heliopolis, Egypt, after being in prison and scourged. scourged. Simon the Canaanian was crucified in AD 74. Thomas was speared to death in India. Matthias was stoned to death. Luke was hung on an olive tree in Egypt. And the Apostle Paul was beheaded under Nero in Rome around 70 AD. You hear of martyrs dying for what they believe in, and that's commendable. But these martyrs were actually eyewitnesses of what they were proclaiming. Jesus is the answer to the sceptic that there's life 
after death. And Jesus promises that those who follow him, he says, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. And the teaching of the New Testament is absent from the body and present with the Lord. And Jesus, when he was crucified on that Good Friday, that first Good Friday with the thief that was crucified alongside him, Jesus says, because that thief repented and believed in him, today I say to you, you will be with me today in paradise. You will be with me today in paradise. So this comfort in death, because Jesus has prepared a place for those who receive him and we will be forever with the Lord. And not only that, there's a great comfort because our loved ones who've died in the Lord, although they're absent from the body and although it grievously hurts us, we can be comforted knowing that they're with the Lord. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 17 says they sleep in Jesus. And when Jesus returns to the earth, he'll bring those with him. They're absent from the body and present with the Lord. And thus we shall be ever with the Lord. There is great comfort in death because we know we have a saviour who has gone ahead of us, he's conquered death and he receives those who put their trust in him. Thanks very much.